Um, no public comment today, so we're going to move straight to approval of previous minutes. Um, Y'all get a chance to read them online? Yes. What about the others? Do you need time to read? No. No. I did not read them, but let me, let me just skim it. Okay. <coughs> little tiny details under the, this recap. It says, um, for all the work with Molly, including today's week, on the very last page, page five. Um, Rob is doing it. I'm just a couple of whatever. But I can't. <laughs> Definitely not three. <laughs> okay, how are you at this week? Oh, say, say, um, Rob will do for me today's week, and Molly will help. Oh, um, I think he was helping you with the uh, spreadsheet today and probably didn't oh. make that clear. Well, it says Rob will work with Molly and do pruning three days a week. Second bullet. Yeah. So work with Molly on spreadsheet. Yeah. Oh, spreadsheet. Okay. I thought that was the number one thing. That was already listed in number that was, one. Yeah, that was already. Yeah. So just take me off the part about pruning. How about just Rob will do pruning for yes. this week? Right. Okay. I don't need if that's what you said, if, that, if that's mm -hmm. how the minute should mm -hmm. reflect, then that's yeah. what it should say. Okay, so Rob will do pruning for this week. Any other suggested changes? Um, motion to approve minutes as amended? Um, I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will abstain. As will I. Thank you, Beth. The, the, the true benefit of your very detailed um, minute taking came came to light for me, being absent and being able to read such detail. Mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. doing such great work and timely work. I really appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, let's see. So chair report. Um, I had the pleasure to meet one of the arborists of the new company that's taking over CL Frank's company, Bartlett Tree. His name is Greg Beck. And he showed, you know, an inherent love of trees and um, interest in what's going on in Northampton. He lives in, I think, Ashfield, but worked, has worked in mostly Connecticut, Hartford area. Um, he, most of his career, so um, now absorbing CL Frank, he's fully in the Northampton area and wants to really dive in and get to know the community, so I invited him to the Tree Commission and a meeting, and he accepted. So we'll be seeing him on January 2nd, um, and Christina Bazanson, I believe on January 16th, I'm going to confirm that with her. She wants to give a little presentation, actually, so I'm going to carve more time for her. Everyone remembers who Christina is. She was at the um, Orchard Street planting. She lives on Orchard Street. She's a new um, arboriculture professor at UMass. Um, so those are two great things to look forward to. Um, Tree Speak uh, Progress is happening. That's exciting. Um, Karen got the websites up. Now I'm out of to make the recordings and then um, create the actual labels with the QR codes. Again, in coordination with Karen. And then um, we'll do a little press release and, and, you know, get the community aware and excited about it. Speaking of press releases, we are really did try to go to bat as much as I could to push for the advertisement of the Neighborhood Tree mm -hmm. Branding Project. And I actually reached out to um, someone who lives in the Ryan Group area and said I'd fold her hand to you know, submit an application. But she had just had a baby like six weeks earlier. <laughs> so life was uh, full. Um, but anyways, I, I did notice on the last um, minutes that you guys were um, brainstorming about how we can do a better job. And I think I think some of the ideas you came up with were good, such as um, approaching the board counselors and getting through their networks and um, disseminating it on some of the neighborhood reserves. So I look forward to 
that being a little bit, um, you know, more widely broadcasted next time. Um, I don't know if Rich, you mentioned that we did manage to plant the last of the American chestnut tree yes. seedlings. Okay. Yep. Um, oh, and then also we have an article that's just been, um, the fine touches have just been put on by a UMass grad student in, uh, I don't know, Stockbridge Schools, Forestry? Uh, Herb, she's an urban forester, urban forestry urban major. Forestry. Yeah. Um, with the help of Rick Harper, they wrote a feature article on um, our program, and they were so um, they were so pleased by it that they felt like it should go to a wider audience than just local newspapers. So they're trying to spin it to ISA International. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, question about that: the chestnut trees are those the ones you're talking about at the cemetery? Yeah, the one you helped. With. Yeah, there haven't been any since then, right? No. Okay. No. Um, I missed the last meeting, so I'm going back in time a little bit. Yeah, that was actually the last planting we did. Yeah. The, for the year. Um, okay, that's it for my chair report. Uh, a couple things in the tree warden report. Uh, there, so I sent you out the flyer for the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters annual conference that they have. If anyone has any interest in attending, you can let me know. Uh, it's a two-day conference, but you can split the days if you like, so I can actually get you registered within. To be clear, are you offering that the city pay for? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to presume. No, it's fine. Absolutely. So if anyone is interested in going, they can get the time. If there's something that interests you on here that you'd like to go, and then we'll figure out the uh, car pool. Jerry, I'm sure you want to be able to see this one? No, we haven't discussed it yet. And... I got it, but I didn't get it to print this nicely, so now I can actually yes. look at it. It was yeah. sideways. I was trying to read it on the computer. It's January 8th or 9th. But there must be a community component in there somewhere. That's what I would be looking for. Yeah, I I didn't quite see that. That's why I wasn't compelled to. I mean, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, it's, you know, understandably tailored for more than yeah. Okay, well, that's one then. Uh, the other item is uh, we had a public shade tree that was cut down illegally in front of 115 Bridge Street. Oh, wow. That was uh, a ginkgo that we planted this past fall. So, oh, wow. I'm sorry, this past spring. Oh, yeah, it was part of uh, 115 Bridge Street is a home that is actually unoccupied and is in the care of a um, real estate company out of Connecticut. And they sent some people up there to clean uh, the property, the, the, the fence, there's a fence there and they overhung a bunch of bushes over on the sidewalk. So they got a complaint from the building inspector's office. Jim Nash, who's the War Street Counselor, got a hold of the individuals who are uh, managing the property and they sent a crew from Connecticut and they cut all the stuff over the hanging over the fence, which is fine because it's their property. And for some unknown reason, they cut the public shade tree down. But they left two other public shade trees there. So, is this one that was on the setback tree? No, no. It was on clearly in the tree belt in a row of two other trees. Yes. Oh. Near that curve on Bridge Street? It's past the curve. Yeah. yeah. So, what's is there going to be some kind of consequence? Yeah, they're going to have to fork over 500 bucks. Good. Whether okay. they like it or not. And they're already telling me they don't like it, and I'm telling you, well, that's too bad. They're yeah. just taking the court. It's all. And we'll buy another tree to put it in there. We'll buy a couple of them. Yeah, we'll yeah, go, yep. Two at least. Good. Um, you know what that reminds me? Um, you know the property that's under discussion for development at the corner of South Street and Olive? Yes. We recently put two setback trees on that. I guess this is before the sale of it. But um, uh, you know, let's maybe get in front of this before mm -hmm. before it becomes it has to become an un unpleasant tug of war. Like maybe approach the owner and say, Do you want us to remove the trees and Plant them somewhere else, or I mean, if those trees are going to be, if, if that if that property is developed, those trees are right. going to go. Yep, and that was actually uh, interesting enough. That was before we had the present agreement that we, the yeah. present filing the registry of deeds. Oh, I see. So, nevertheless, they, I mean, that all the more reason why it's probably in our interest to get in front of it right away and yep. at least save those trees from. Because then, if we don't really have any jurisdiction over them legally, you might as well try to get them back while they're still. Well, I don't, I don't think we'll have an issue with it. The plan has been um, 
batted around by the planning board and it's still not it's not going anywhere right now no it's kind of stuck in limbo at the moment yeah. so i'll make yeah. a little mental right. note it's eventually going to be built okay um there was also uh some cutting actually lily if you recall where you planted those two black gums on on north main street remember you planted the yeah. setback tree so behind that uh -huh. house uh, -huh. uh there's a big backyard and right behind that property abuts that property is uh the old multicolor building, which is a factory in yeah. Florence. Well, right. the owner of the multicolor building decided to cut down a whole bunch of trees on his property. The you mean Bill Arnold? That no, building? No, Eric Schuer. Next to next to the Bill Arnold building. I don't know what the Bill Arnold oh. building is. I just know him by the old factory name when I first started okay. here. So well, it's almost multicolor for me. Uh, uh -huh. So the uh, they cut down a significant amount of uh, trees. Uh, there's a uh, locust and. Um, very large Norway maple. So the building inspector got involved and they actually ordered a cease and desist. Um, and they're going to have to actually mitigate because they're supposed to be, able, according to the zoning in that particular, that build, that land is zoned where they actually have to have a buffer between their residents and the businesses. So the building inspector is on top of that. I have to go over and do a just a quick count of the trees that were removed just to verify what they already looked at. So, Black gums are okay, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's on the other side, but these are, this is, but it's just that I, it's kind of important, I think, to tell you this because it's, it lets you know that there is a lot of communication going on yeah. uh, between the building inspector who enforces the zoning because mm -hmm. uh, this is not a significant tree ordinance issue. There's no site plan review happening there. So it's good that that's we're good. communicating. Unfortunately, um, the, the resident actually who we made the agreement with, Pan. Morgan was the one that actually alerted us that the trees were coming down. Uh -huh. So, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, I don't really have anything else to update you. I'm still unpacking stuff. I've moved. So, it's just kind of a, uh, in, in progress, but everything seems to be working out so far. Great. Do so you awesome. like new space? Do I like my new space? Yeah, I like it a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's, bright it's cheery it's very different than being inside the barns building in the dark and the dirt yeah so yeah i mean it's just a little bit of a um because of the the part of the crew is still at the highway department it's, it can be kind of a pain but hopefully we'll have uh probably by the middle of the summer maybe the end of the summer we'll have everybody in one place completely so that'll make operations a lot easier so uh, the other thing too is that I don't know if I told you this, but we ordered a brand new tree truck. Oh wow! Brand new tree truck, uh, which is got to have a lift of uh, 75 feet. Uh, and we also ordered a brand new chip truck, brand new chipper, brand new stump grinder, and a brand new front end lower. Whoa! Wow. A lot of equipment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's all been ordered for the uh, tree division. Are you keeping the old stuff too? No, it gets traded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gets traded there, so. The mayor's commitment to uh, this uh, this wing of the department is really wow, is ramped up in a lot of different ways. So, oh, all, 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 all have been wow. over, yeah. Um, while we have you, um, I, I, in reviewing the notes, I noticed that you have been um, you've been appointed to the Energy and Sustainability Committee. Yeah. So, what does that look like? What's that going to mean for you? Um, well, I'm the department's representative, so that means that I actually have a vote. Um, it also means that I have a lot of homework to do because I am not, I mean, if you ask me about tree diseases, I could really rattle off a bunch of stuff. But if you ask me about um, the uh, different alternative energies and what they, you know, I have a lot of reading to do because I'm coming in like at the fifth hour. Um, but I will sit on all those meetings and I will basically have a lot of actually have a lot of say I think in a sense or at least have the inform have the ability to actually shape things that happen and have and be at the forefront of those discussions instead of being at the other end of those discussions so um, it's interesting but again I have a lot of homework to do because that's not my it's not my forte yeah uh, but it's gonna have to be and right. actually I think it kind of ties right in with what we've been charged to do here in this room uh, plus what we've been trying to do for the last four years so it's, yeah, and the recognition more and more the green infrastructure is the way to go. Yeah, yep. And that so that's an important piece for you yep. to table. Yep, I agree. Because there's definitely a bias toward.
great infrastructure sustainability projects. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say that the uh, the resiliency and regeneration um, public public session we had, which was the last one, which Molly right. had and I was at, that's yeah. that's kind of over with. But there was a huge, there's a whole bunch of pieces in there for green infrastructure. Um, yeah. That's just one of many different things coming down the pipeline. So, I mean, there, there's a huge. Uh, I should say, uh, I'm trying to get the right words, but uh, the fact that green infrastructure can reduce stormwater runoff is just a huge component that actually kind of all ties together with what the DPW is trying to get accomplished. Um, as a matter of fact, I met um, with uh, a couple of uh, engineers in regards to the uh, Old South Street parking lot because they wanted to hear about what our project was, um, you know, what our proposal was, and I went down and explained it to them, and they're actually looking at possibly um, Making some stormwater improvements, some surface flow stormwater improvements, something very simplistic, um, where they actually get rid of some of the curbing, and so the actual water will actually go right into the structural soil um, instead of actually going down on the catch basin, actually going into the Mill River bed. They're looking to find ways to restore the Mill River bed. It's one of the ten projects that was uh, selected um, in the the other committee that I'm on, and I can't remember the name of it moment. There's too many acronyms. I got to write them all down. I got to. Did you get the climate change resilience one? Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's just one. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the mix, which is really good because then I can actually put my two cents in yeah. and put our two cents in. I should say. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? For yeah. You? That's it for me. All right. Uh, okay. So um, I uh, sent shared everyone. Uh, shared with everyone a Google spreadsheet that I created to create some structure around how we evaluate the neighborhood planting projects. Um, it's a draft, it's, you know, not, it's, it's, it's to be considered, but I did put um, good, good, you know, hour plus time thinking about when we get these, when we get these projects, when the applications come in, how do we review them? Um, in a, a fair, thorough, thoughtful way. So um, that didn't get printed out among the packet of things, because I don't think I sent it to you guys, unfortunately. But um, I would love for us to consider it. Did anyone get a chance to look at it? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, any thoughts? I'm sorry, I didn't look at it. I looked at everything it? else. What about you, Todd? Yeah, it was the intent for this to be the, the Review guideline for yeah. this project and then the projects going forward. For, really, it's about projects going forward. Okay. I, you know, I, I plunked in the data of um, <clears throat> of our two projects, and um, by way of full disclosure, I want to say that I, um, I really wanted us to have at least two applications to look at just to go through this exercise. So I supported Wade in submitting an application. I walked with him down the street, we identified sites very roughly, and then he submitted the application. Um, but I wanted it as an exercise um, so that we would know how to, to, you know, so that we would have the practice of looking at more than one application. So, um, so that, seeing the two helped generate some of the column A categories that I created there. Um, such as, um, are there any problem areas? Did they check every one of the check boxes that we hear? Do you want to say that? Yeah, I did look at it. I didn't realize okay, it was something at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is, there a, is there a row that says number of volunteers? No, there's not. No, that's good. That's a good point. Well, that's part of the check boxes because the check yeah. box asks, do you have at least two volunteer hours? What is it per tree or something like that? Is that can you provide? So I feel like that is um, that's a given. And so if they check that box, and then there's two person hours per tree. Per tree. Then if they check that box, then you know that by the number of trees they proposed double that for the number of volunteer hours they're providing. <clears throat> so um, the other thing that I I put in under row 13 is any refusals from the commissioners. I, I feel strongly that if somebody is a direct beneficiary of a particular project, 
that they ought to recuse themselves. And so in this case, I would recuse myself from deliberation and vote on, on this particular project um, or this round of applications rather. Um, and then one of the, uh, the the last two rows vote to support this year. So we, you know, someone make a motion to vote to, to to vote on a project, and then and then the, the question is, what happens to the, the folks that didn't get selected? Do we roll them over into next year? Do we automatically say you're going to be chosen next year? You know, I that's something I feel like we we should have some kind of policy. Maybe that should go on the application to say, if you don't get chosen this year, would you like this to be rolled over? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility of doing part of what they'd like? So that's, yes, that's a, well, uh, there's, so there's a couple of things we could consider. Can we do two? Could we do one and a half? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting thought that I hadn't considered. So any other? thoughts about how this looks and how it structured this. Just wanted to provide it in a format that's easier for us to compare, you know, one against the other. So, um, so your idea is then we would all look at them and discuss it and then decide? Or did you want to like have a point system? No, I, you know, I, I think that that's probably overthinking it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, unless you get like 10 applications yeah. or something. That wasn't where my mind was going. I just wanted to make sure that we had all the data in front of us when we're deliberating and that we're really thinking about, especially problem areas. Mm -hmm. You know, like what what are some, what might make one project way more complicated than mm -hmm. another? Mm -hmm. Would we also look at the quality of the site in terms of the possible longevity of the trees and the value to the overall canopy of the city? Well, I put that under the, is the neighborhood in a priority zone? Because I kind of, that's um, row 10. Because I feel like we've already asked that question in general by um, by identifying areas of these where we feel like we, we get more bang for our buck, more public benefit, because they are in an EJ area. Or, um, I guess I meant, is it a good, healthy place for a tree? You mean the site's the site? Site, uh, yeah. Okay. Is it a viable tree site? Okay, that's fine. I, yeah, think, the that's, tree I think that merits another row. Mm -hmm. So that would be, let me just insert one here. Um, so probably before we discuss it, we should have one or two people designated as visitors like the just to go, you know, quickly. Okay, so I could probably put results of site visit. So that what that what that means is that there's going to have to be every year a stage after which we get the application and before which we deliberate when we do a site visit, unless we've been holding. The person's hand all along, which I think has been the case with Prospect Street. Um, was I, I mean I don't know. What do you mean by holding hands all along? Ken filled out the sheet. I think Alicia went and okay. looked at it and I, with him, but I wasn't involved. Alicia, and I kind of yeah. I have not had any contact with Ken okay. right. on this well, myself, and I don't know the extent to which Alicia helped him. Okay. But, um, so maybe we could say um, a a a, um, a member of the commission board, a delegate, or you know, a designated person has made a site visit. Like in this case, it could have been Alicia was designated by us to go on. So I'm just thinking in future years. Mm -hmm. um, our um, two areas. I was wondering if there if they are criteria. Do we favor ones that have more setback trees versus? Um, is that an advantage having more setbacks versus tree belt trees? That's kind of what I was thinking about the, from the tree perspective, like healthy tree, we want to have good, healthy, long living trees and the setbacks, by definition, give the tree more space. Maybe, I mean, depending on how big the tree belt is. Yeah, I mean, I think that's site specific because if you think about like South Street's got that 10 foot, you know, tree belt, I know that's rare. But some tree belts are, are much better than others. The other thing is that I know tree belts aren't perfect, but they provide so much more in the way of potential stormwater mitigation over the street. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the site, Because sometimes, I mean, there's some places in the city where the tree belt's narrow and, and 
to have a really big tree, you, you would, it would be better if it was set back and could arch over everything. If, if it's the right tree, yes. Yeah. So I guess that gets back to the point where it's really site specific. Right. And salt and traffic. Mm -hmm. well, the that, setbacks are true. safer, but you're going to quite mitigating the water. And traffic calming. Mm -hmm. you have the, the so it problems. sounds like there's like pros and cons to tree belt versus setback. So there's not one that's clearly more desired than another. Yeah, I don't think we should weight that. Uh, it's worth looking at, but I don't think we should weight it because what if um, you know you get some uh, buddy to uh, writes one up for a neighborhood that we haven't serviced very much, a ward we haven't serviced, and it's all street trees and it's environmental just you know. Yeah. So we don't want to boot something yeah. out, or you know, right, right. after we do it four years, you know, there may be some good ones, but then there's one from a group that is underserved, or you know, right. yeah. then that we want to leave that it would open. a higher rating in one of the other categories. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, well but like that. in the case of Monroe Street. There really aren't parent yards that can accommodate trees. So setbacks is almost a non-issue. Mm -hmm. um, so it's tree belt or nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, this just to say, I feel like there there should be maybe a summary result of somebody who goes out and makes a site visit. Right. Another area is um, is it preferable to have um, large, not underwire trees compared to small underwire trees? You know, given the sites available, is that something we prefer? Um, I think that I think that fits into row ten that says again priority zone neighborhoods with sparse tree cover. I feel like if we're well, that's that just like a definition. That is a definition. Right, right. Well, I think if if we get on track with the uh, plan outline, I think. Basically, these applications should be reviewed on the one-year planting priorities that the commission establishes at the beginning of the year, or rotating, whatever those priorities may be for that year. The application should be judged in part against those but priorities. The, the planting plan, one of the categories is neighborhood planting, all by itself. Yeah, and left and left pretty broad. I. I think, here's my personal opinion. My personal opinion is whenever we can prioritize greater canopy, we should, but we should also do it against, is it an EJ community? Yeah, you know, is it, is it a, so I, I, you know, it's a little bit like, th that's always a goal to shoot for, is maximizing canopy, but but if it means that we're right, deselecting an EJ community that can only handle underwire trees. Right, right, but, but that's why, so we have a category in here for EJ. Yeah. And maybe we should also create a category for tree size, because we're considering all those different things, right? And it's not just because you put tree size and you're not considering the other ones. Okay. It's among all the different things that you're considering. Okay, so what would you call that bro, Molly? Um, would you say like overall distribution of large, large versus small trees? Uh, okay, let's say distribution. Potential for enhancing canopy, potential for. Or distribution of large, medium, small. Yeah, I'm going to you, you could have That's three easy. setbacks that are huge and then exactly. yeah. eight small, you know, that okay. maybe. Okay, distribution of large, medium, and small trees. Got it. That That's like numerical. Yeah. That is not qualitative, right. it's pretty numerical. Mm -hmm. Um, there was another one. I also put in ward because you know. Oh, by the way, that's ward one. It is ward one. It's the other side of the, that side of prospect is ward one. Okay. The child's park side is ward two. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, because as you know, we're also trying to balance out the wards over mm -hmm. over time, and this would help with that. All right. Um, anything else about this rubric? Um, does anyone feel that we should make a site visit to either one of these? We talked about that yeah. last week. Weren't you going to go with Rob? I did. You did? Mm -hmm. To both? Uh, I've already walked up and down Prospect Street numerous times. Okay. So Prospect Street's kind of... Done. Well, it's barren. <laughs> it's not, there's really no trees there. Okay. Um, is there a wire on that side? And I've walked up and down Monroe Street recently, although I'm recusing myself. 
So, you know, Rob and I just kind of made some mental notes. Um, a lot of a lot of underwire locations, um, a lot of the uh, places that where you could actually have overarching trees, you're probably only going to get medium trees in there because the tree belt is not as big. Oh. The tree belt, like on Prospect Street, for example, even though it's underwire is much larger than the tree belt on Monroe Street. Monroe Street's roadway width is just narrower. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think we ended up actually figuring out we could probably do about possibly 28. 28 medium trees? No, a combination of uh, medium and underwire. So let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 about 20 underwire trees. Okay, so that's 20 small. Yep, and so about then eight medium? Eight medium, possibly a couple of larges. And we had one address that we could not find. We had to circle back. Okay. It was 14 Monroe. There was no house there that had 14 on it. 14 Crosscut? No, Monroe. Wait, wait, those numbers oh. you just gave were from Monroe? Those are from Monroe. Oh, oh I thought you were still talking Crosscut. Oh, okay. So, guys, um, are. Sorry, no, I'm talking about Monroe. I apologize. Oh, so, that's all right. Um, uh, yes, tell us about Prospect. Do you have numbers for that? No, I don't have numbers for Prospect Street. Um, we, I actually need to go over there again and actually walk it one more time. But I, the majority of Prospect Street is going to be underwater trees. Unless we actually make some setback agreements with some residents to actually do some setback trees. And there were six setbacks. Yeah, you looked it in the application. Yeah. Setback. Yeah. Does he have specific locations for the setbacks? He does. does. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Tree when, number he one, when he came to me and talked about that. I, mean, I know I got feedback that he's been, you know, that he was talking to specific neighbors and arranging <clears throat> commitments for setbacks. Yeah. That's where Rich would come in looking at those locations. Yeah, he listed some of the addresses, like 303 Prospect is a setback. And so is 315. Three is... And then, yeah, he listed other ones too. Okay, so what I'd like to know is would we like, do we have enough information now for the committee one, two, three, four, five. So there is five of you who can vote. So we do have a quorum to vote on this. For the committee to vote for the, the project for this year, or do you feel like there's still more we need to, more information we need to gather? Um, I think I would be, I would prefer if we actually waited and put it on the next agenda. Okay. to vote. I always just want to go to Prospect Street and just get a really, I've walked it, but I have not taken this application in hand and actually looked at the locations that he's proposing. I did do that over on Monroe, so I want to give Prospect Street the same to fair, Good. you know, just to be fair and equitable. Okay. Um, and we should all read the, re, make sure we read the rubric and come to the next meeting ready with, to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering since there are only two applicants, might we consider in our inaugural year doing this uh, offer both, one in the spring, one in the fall? It's a possibility, but you're going to have to not plant 30 trees somewhere else, basically. Meaning that you're going to have to, when we go to actually review the plan of a plan, decide to implement that we're going to, unless you are telling me that you want me to plant 30 more trees than 200. There is a category that ad hoc, ad hoc yeah, but how many? Yeah. 40. So between neighborhood plantings and ad hoc, that's 60 altogether. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to weigh in on this, the details, but here's, here's something I'd like us to consider. One is don't forget to consider the wards and like how, how we want the distribution of awards to go. And let's, so make sure you compare those. And then the other is, I think that there's value in forcing yourselves to choose because that's the exercise that you're going to be asked to do every year. And I think it's okay to say no to one and yes to another and not feel bad about it because that's the expectation. <clears throat> At this point, is that there's going to be one selected. And we have all these other great areas that we're working in. 
I don't feel bad about choosing. I was just thinking. I mean, if we had ten, then obviously we'd have to. I, I think. I think if we had, like Willie just said, all the areas we're working in, great places to plan. If we didn't have those places, then I would say that mm -hmm. we should take them both. But I think we we have other we have other places that we if we have bridge. For example, Bridge Street is just about done, but there's some fill-in places there. Bridge Road, we still need to go back and continue to work on that. There's yeah. places that we haven't touched. That's just an example of unfinished business from last year. But I have to say that it was a really good feeling, this is off top a little bit, to actually, re to actually realize that Bridge Street is almost complete. I mean, literally, other than actually filling in maybe four or five locations, and maybe if we ever were to capture some setbacks, Bridge Street is planted as far as we can get it planted, which is actually pretty nice to know that right. that's done and mm -hmm. now we're going to move on to an, another planting priority. So, but anyway, so yeah, yeah. And we are going to touch on that when we do the subcommittee reports because okay. Molly, Marilyn, and I are in that too. Okay, okay so. Um, can I say something else about the neighborhood planting? Yeah. Um, for future years, um, I think if we're going to really go out and encourage lots of people to apply, we should make sure that they know that it's very competitive so that there it's a lot of work to do this application and talk to all the neighbors and figure out the sites and I feel a little bad that um, you know like a lot of people might be submitting and only one's going to get it um, so at least I want to make sure that people are aware that they there's a good chance they might not get it. I think you raise a good point I think that also, um, I don't think we've completely come to a decision about what we're going to do to those, for those applications that otherwise are strong that don't get selected. Like, are we rolling them over to the next year? Are they getting some kind of priority consideration next year? Are we going to try to absorb them into some kind of ad hoc planting? So I think that that's a, I think it's well, a really good point. It think is about important. it in terms of like, we're talking about really ramping up our advertising about it next year to get more people to apply. What if we have like six or seven groups apply and only one gets it? It just feels a little like. That's, that, that's um, actually a good point because it is a lot of work for one individual yeah, to yeah. canvas the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to. Really Instead involved. of just saying to them, well, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to apply again next year. Thank you very much. Right. I mean, that's kind of. It feels a little. It feels know. a little cr crass. Maybe that's not the right word, but it feels just a little like. You know, yeah. Instead that's, of. That's like, awesome. Right. Yeah. Instead of like, you know, well, thank you. We're going to the top of the list next year and. Yeah. Or something of that nature. We'd have to think about how we want to do right. that. But I definitely think that. I mean, they should be rewarded in some yeah. way uh, yeah. because of all the hard work they did, even though they yeah. were not selected for this particular, that particular year's plan. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I know that, that you know, that my neighbor was super excited about it and was really looking, you know, envisioned the community aspect of it, the community yeah. building aspect of it. So I think you raised a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the, mean, in the interim, I will connect with Rob and do a site visit with this application like we did on we just before the next meeting, so probably in the middle of next week. Okay. All right. So we're going to agree that we're going to vote on this next time. Everyone has this rubric. Um, uh, if you, if there are other aspects that you feel are really important, go ahead and I, I'm going to just make sure I've given everyone editing rights to this and um, put them in. Let us know that. Well, we can't do that. This. Well, our next meeting is January. Second. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait. To, it, don't put it in because that's not allowable. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. but we'll discuss well, that you could just uh, email you <coughs> so you know. Yeah. And, and I'll bring, bring it, it up. Yeah, that's... yeah. And how do we, as individuals, contribute to decision making unless we understand what, where, our, where each of them lie in terms of <coughs> the economic justice zone and foot traffic? Is it just our impression, or is there any data? I know we have board data. Oh, um, we have sheet. Specific maps. We oh, do, okay. yes, definitely. And it's listed on your rubric. Uh, yeah, it is. I think I already put it. Oh, you did? I did. Uh, I put it under comments, where you say, is it in, in, in a priority zone? And Prospect Street is absolutely a priority street that Molly, Marilyn, and I identified a long time ago. I see. It's also next to a park, so that's kind of near our community node. Um, the hospital. Where is it about? 
Yeah. It's on the other side, like yeah, yeah. on the far other so side of the park. Yeah, it's close. To, it's definitely close to YMCA. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, is there any other aspects of it I'm forgetting? To park, synagogue. People walk down it to get to the Yeah. Or at least yeah. Yeah. So it's pedestrian route. Yeah. 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 Pedestrian route for kids that go to uh, Jackson Street Jackson. School as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a school route. Yeah. Okay. Bike path. Up to the, the bike path. Access school, to the bike path. Walking routes. A lot of people so walk on that street on Saturday. Right. So we're just yeah. 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 It's also a busy street in terms of cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so traffic coming so aspect is why yeah. yeah. um, people fly along there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's there's a very different. The only thing that Monroe Street is is that it has this, it has a school bus stop at the corner of Monroe and South. Um, <coughs> good. All right. Anything else about this before we move on? We are we have reached the end of this discussion period. Move so on. we'll vote. At our first January meeting? Yeah, yeah. January 2nd is when we're first meeting. Okay. All right. Todd, you're going to lead us in discussion about the, the various ordinance. It's not just significant true. So, is the intent here to talk about this stuff that was sent to us by Rich? I would say whatever is most time sensitive. Yeah. Is that the stuff that's most yeah. time sensitive? Well, that's, that's the significant tree ordinance. It's not, this is actually. These are different than yeah. these are mm -hmm. specifically solar by right yes. ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Um in that case, can I um should we change the agenda? Because yeah. it's really not the significant tree ordinance we're talking Correct. about. It's okay, so uh, I like uh, can someone make a motion to say that we're gonna change the agenda to say ordinance revision? I make a motion that we change the agenda to say ordinance revisions. Revisions. Okay. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Todd, take it away. Um, so, well, I guess uh, Rich, you want to tee this up because it was sent to you from Carolyn on behalf of the mayor? Yes, it was sent to me uh, from the planning department on behalf of the mayor. Uh, because of a loophole that exists, that uh, exists in uh, actually building ground-mounted solar arrays, um, uh, that actually uh, that can generate a, uh, generate greater of uh, one hundred percent or twelve kV of the annual projected electric use in a non-PV building. Does that make sense? There's three. There's there's three. There's three categories. By right, which you just read. Yes. Yep. And, uh, and then the the this, there's that. there's a site plan approval required for the following uh, solar uh, photovoltaic of any size, ground mounted, with administrative site plan for also planning sustainability. Um, just some just some cleanup in there. But one of them is if power and telecommunications extensions are provided on the ground to the extent feasible. Um, and the probably the most probably the most important one. Is the special permit approval required for the following uses by planning board unless otherwise noted um, and this has to do with uh, large-scale ground mounted um, not requiring a removal of more than 25,000 board feet of timber <clears throat> so part of the problem is the loophole is that with this large array being built that if a present owner decided to clear-cut their land they could do so and then they sell the land to the individual who's going to put the ground mounted solar array. So, um, with that, uh, they wanted to actually get ahead of this before this happened, but unfortunately, it already happened. It was an individual site that this happened on. Um, Where somebody before selling That's it correct, yes. Just clear cut? Yes, correct. Right. So, so they made these changes uh, to actually prevent that from happening. Todd, what's your read on it? Uh, yeah, so uh, not only has this happened once, but it certainly happens in other communities. There's a, two big projects in Belchertown that are requiring extreme clear cutting. There's another project in East Hampton, another one in West Hampton. 
So the, the DOER likes to think that they created a smart program to disincentivize clear cutting for solar facilities, but they clearly have not done so in my public opinion. Um, this is a good step forward. Um, I think it does uh, achieve um, the, the loophole closing to the extent possible that it does, at least for the term that it closes it for. Um, I think it's written decently. I would question on the site plan approval um, in the second category. The, the way number four is written right now, uh, it seems to be a carte blanche exclusion. Uh, I would, if it would, is the intent that that exclusion does not reach as far as a clear cut site of over 25,000 board feet, that should be made pretty explicit. Because right now you could argue that you could clear as many board feet as you want as long as you put your power lines on the ground. Uh, other than that, um, I think the changes are. Um, meaty and important in uh, as uh, community solar projects go forward. Why is it so important to put the power lines underground? Why is that yeah. such a... I have no idea. That's I mean, the mayor it's, of it's more, uh, I mean, I don't know for, like, really, yeah. but I... It's aesthetics. It's, well, it's aesthetics, but it's also um, less problematic in major storm events, mm -hmm. like, the, like, you know, yeah. big climate change right, storm right, events. Right, right. So you can rely on that well, power. But, but that's yeah, like, it's not going to get knocked down by tree limbs. Solar or array whatever. generating power during a storm event. Yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but in the long run. You yeah, know, I have the storm, run, perhaps. It's just less. So in other words, if they put their lines underground, they can go ahead and yeah. cut all the trees they want? I don't think that's their intent, but if I were a lawyer, that's how I would that's what it sounds like. Is, is there, so site approval required for the following. All right, so you have so this so that triggers the significant tree ordinance right there, number four. Oh. So so that site plan approval required for the following for all zoning districts. If power and telecommunication extensions are provided on the ground to the extent feasible, which means that that, if that was what their intent was, the site plan approval would be required, so they would have to abide by the significant tree ordinance. Mm -hmm. Oh no! I, I, site plan. You disagree with that? I, I, so I mean, that just, whole category is a site plan from the is an administrative site plan. So you can build a solar array over a parking lot or driveway on a landfill or at an airport with just site plan approval from an administrative from, site plan gotcha. from the planning office, yeah. or you can build an array of any size anywhere you want. Cut down as many trees as you want, put it on a wetland, whatever. As long as you bury the power lines, you can get signed up by the administrative office. Is the way it reads. Yeah, I don't think that's their intent, no. but that's the way it reads. Well, oh, do we need to bring that to their attention? I think, it's, I think it's a good question, actually. I think it's a good question. I mean, there has to be some, <laughs> there has to be some latitude administratively um, from, the, from the planning department. But the question is, is that do you know how tight do they want to make their their regulations in the sense, or how, how tight do they want to make the ordinance? You know, so for example, so for example, the project on South Street. This is just an example of site plan review. You cannot have every single detail. You know, the planning board will issue a permit to do the work over there, and there'll be conditions. But you cannot have every single detail in that condition. Those conditions. It's almost impossible because you can't. You, you can't uh, possibly understand what site conditions you might run into actually when the project is underway. So there has to be administrative leeway. That's one aspect of it. This seems to be a little, a little more than. And I think Todd brings a good point. Uh, well, I mean, it's a question. I think you and I are looking at the same thing. The word "and." Yes. Because <laughs> I think if you read if you read those four numbers. It says or and or after one or two, but after three it says and. So three and four are tied together. Yeah. Oh. And that's, no, but no, I see number four. If they do number four and any of the other of uh, one, two, or three, hmm. then they don't have to, um, then they get automatic approval. Now, that's not clear to me. I thought it was that the reason now why the four is connected by and to three is because you wouldn't want power lines in an airport area. Well, got it. Mm -hmm. I read it the other way that 
Because well, look at the punctuation though. There's there's at the end right. of driveway. There's a semicolon, yeah. so that relates yeah. to the or. Yeah. The next one there's a semicolon relates to the or, and they crossed mm -hmm. out and, and then the third one semicolon and. So I think right. I, I think that my reading would be really three and four related, but I'm not an English oh. teacher. <laughs> Well, it's unclear, I guess. And if the two of us are reading yeah. it differently, because I would read it to say that if you do number four plus any of those other three, yeah. then and you get the I think you automatic could approval. I think you could read it both ways. And so right. it's, at least it's not it's not clear. Minor problem is it's not clear, but the major problem is why does underground um, lines does that really warrant? Well, it does in the case to, of an airport. Yeah. Right, so it really depends. But it doesn't make sense to me for these other ones. Maybe they wanted to do that. I have a separate question about um, so the measurement is in board feet and the significant tree ordinance is in DBH. So maybe I'm, I'm confused, but so I don't. Is board feet only, I think I brought this up last time too, but is board feet only for trees that you can actually cut boards from? Yes. That are, okay. Timber as so, opposed to fire. Okay, so you could have, you know, acres of, let's say, 15 foot and red tall poplars, right. red maple, yeah. box elder, that kind of thing. And right. they could just clear cut that, and that's a significant value, you know. It's huge carbon to, sequestration. Yeah, and wildlife and all Absolutely. kinds of stuff. Absolutely. So water, I mean, so my question then is, so we've got two different measurements. So you're saying, so when does a significant tree ordinance come into effect? Because that's based on DBH, so there could be no trees. You you could have you could have a, you could have all these trees that are pretty big, but even that wouldn't you know work for making boards out of. They're either undesirable species or they're all messed up growth wise, and then they could clear cut that. You are know what we, I'm saying? I do totally. Are we? Absolutely sure that DBH isn't just another way of measuring any tree. DBH is. I'm sorry. I meant the board feet. I'm yeah. not absolutely sure, but that's my understanding. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not because, a forester. I mean, technically, I, I think that in some ways, the board feet uh, measurement is a is a more exact way uh, of measuring a tree because it's 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 get capturing its entire volume as opposed to just, I mean, you know, you could have a tree with a really weird growth pattern. Mm -hmm. my, my experience with this is that like when you're talking about um, firewood, it's measured in cores and not board feet. So are you capturing these questions that we have? Because I think that that's a significant question. I think that we need to make sure that trees are protected of any size that, regardless of whether they qualify for, as timber, as so, right, right. As far as I know, and I think Carolyn responded to our question on this, this the, this ordinance is separate from the significant tree ordinance, and the significant tree ordinance would still be triggered by a site plan or special permit application for a solar facility. Right? Yes. In her email, she says that there are other ways to protect the kind of land that Jen's talking about. I don't like understand what ordinance or you know, law protects ecologically significant resources. Well, wetlands restrictions do for sure. Well, that's a state thing anyway. Yeah. It's It says we feel by adding a special permit criteria for the systems that we are designing with more than 25,000 board feet of timber removal, the planning board could selectively approve or deny such projects if they met specific standards. 
We want to protect steep slopes to prevent erosion, and we want to protect wetland resource areas. So that is why the prohibition on slopes and wetland encroachment is written in the ordinance. The board could also deny a project if there were a particularly unique stand of trees or forests or any other ecologically significant resource. So this could open a window for very good renewable energy pr production projects while continuing to manage and protect important woodlands for the city. So number six on the back. It says if over 25,000 board feet of timber must be removed, the project must be carbon neutral over the first 10 years of, that, of operation. They calculated this way. They told the volume of timber to be removed, um, certified by a forester, subtracting the estimated timber replacement trees provided under the significant tree. So, looking at. And by timber, does she mean like every little last shred of wood? Or just things that are of timber quality, right? That's a good question. See, so that's my that's clear. my question. That so right. Can can we get some clarity on that piece? Total volume of timber to remove. Well, total volume of timber to remove provided by independent certified forester. Right. So that person would actually give the total of timber to that's actually but so usable. We need to clarify what, what timber. timber. So we need the definition of timber. Seems obvious to us, and but is, is it like industrially, com like commercial wood. timber, or is it just any shred of wood? Pulp wood. No, what? it's it's timber, I believe. Which is a high quality. Yeah. Board board feet of timber. So that means board feet of that's wood. That's the Well, wait. Board feet of wood is not the same as board feet of timber. From a forester's perspective, timber means the high quality stuff. Correct. That you can sell for. So forest. estimated timber and replacement trees provided on a significant tree or. Or so, section of the zoning 10 years after planting. So I think we need a definition of timber. That would, that would clarify things. There probably is a definition of timber in here. If over, so, so if they're going to cut over 25,000 board feet of timber, but there happens to be a tree that's non-timber acceptable, but is a significant tree, they have to mitigate for that according to six. You have to mitigate for the significant. That's just the calculation for carbon neutral. Okay. Okay. But the the you would you would have in order to in order to build a solar array on a wooded parcel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That requires site plan or special yeah, okay. permit approval. You automatically trigger. Got it. The significant tree. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, let's okay. give an example. Let's say you have, um, let's say you have an area that's got twenty-five thousand um, board feet of timber, but has fifty thousand board feet of total wood, mm -hmm. like twenty-five, like double that, but half of it is not board quality. So are they, then are they is there like carbon neutral calculation taking into consideration that non timber wood? And let's say none of that I, is I, I, I didn't I didn't get into the carbon neutral stuff. I really read it more about protect I didn't get into this calculation on it. So I have no idea. All right, so I think it just gets back to how timber Well if they're talking about if their goal is carbon neutral, then obviously it doesn't matter <clears> if it's timber quality or Firewood or hemlock or poplar. Or well, I agree, but that's, but that's what the. Yeah, it's just not clear. Because total volume of timber. Is timber a synonym for board feet? Or is timber. Timber just means what? Yeah. Right, anyway. Yeah, any trees. All right, just so. special. Special. All right, so where do we want to go, folks? So we're, do we need clarification on this? Do we need, I mean, definitely need clarification on the, on the definition of timber. It says timber is wood prepared for use in building and carpentry. Yeah. That's what timber is. Then that's, that's talking about the high quality stuff. So, so you're excluding, right. so you could have a, you're a excluding plot of land well. that's very. You're excluding a ton of carbon. So. So again, if there's only 50% of timber quality wood on that lot, and they're only and their carbon calculations only talk about replacing for that wood, then you're losing a lot of carbon. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Timber versus lumber. 
Yes, right. Lumber right. is used to refer to sawn wood. Oh, yes, wood. right. Lumber would be made of. Yeah. Maybe that's what they intended in the meeting, but I think we just need to clarify it. Okay, so who's going to beans or boards used in the Is that Rich or Rob? I'm sorry, Rich or Todd? That's what? No, it's just, you're could, subtracting the estimated. I mean, talk about a weird calculation. You're subtracting the estimated timber board fee in the replacement trees that they provided under the significant tree ordinance 10 years after planting. I didn't understand that at all. It's a well, that's, number. You're, that's saying, a you're asking an arborist to say, you're, I planted 100 maples. They were one inch diameter, and 10 years are going to be X inch diameter, which will create X amount of board feet, mm. which is almost zero. You, you can get that off of I tree, though, the computer Yeah, but no, no one inch caliper tree in 10 years is going to produce right. any board feet. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. So zero. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Ten, 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 there's a lot of weird things in that state. Yeah, I, ten just, years I just worry. I just worry that you know people are already trying to get around this, and the intent <coughs> is solid. Like I agree with the intent. I just think they ought to really make sure that the wording is tight and what, like the what the words really mean and what you know. Yeah. Well, because somebody's question, just going to do a workaround again. Is the know? twelve month time frame is that consistent with the significant tree ordinance? That is it re reference twelve months too? Yes, the significant tree ordinance does have that. All right. All right. Well, we're at a point where we need to move on. So, where um, Todd, you were leading this, this little section. What do you? What more do you need from us? Um. I guess uh, probably nothing. Sounds like you, we need some clarification on a couple things. Are you are you going to seek those? I think it's a very complicated way to deal with this problem. There, there's no way a solar facility is economically feasible if you have to make make the meet the conditions of the significant tree mm -hmm. yeah, That's no ah. coming. Well, unless you have a, 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 a site that doesn't have significant trees, all young trees. It's probably what's going to happen to that site that was clear cut. It's going to, the significant tree ordinance will apply to that. So they're, you're talking large dollars. It's 40 inches or bigger? It's 20. But the, yeah, but if they're all young trees, then you just go and clear cut it and apply for this because you're not triggering anything. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so what's our next move? Just so I have clarity. You have some. You want to formulate some questions, or would you rather just have Carolyn come here and talk to us? It's up to you. I can ask Carolyn to come to the next meeting. Yeah, Do you have any other questions? I think part of the reason why this is a little confusing, it's pieces and parts. It's pieces and parts of the zoning. I think it would be very helpful if she came. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, if not the January 2nd, then the next one. Yeah, well, I think January 2nd, if I can get her here, I think yeah. that would be good because I think they would like to fast track this so okay. we prevent that, close that loophole. So they want our back, they want us to. Yes, they would like us hey, to. They would like us to call, yeah. they would like the commission to co sponsor yeah. this ordinance just like they did the last yeah. two ordinance changes yeah. that we did. It yeah. seems like a fundamental underlying question here is which is more important, carbon sequestration or renewables? On a given site, you know, if you have a lot of trees there that are sequestering carbon, you know, which which do we want to value more, having the trees do that or taking the trees down and putting in solar panels? That's like a fundamental question, and I don't know if it comes down can be figured out based on you know mathematics of how much carbon is sequestered and how much the panels produce and all that. There must be some the standard open. calculation somebody figured out already. Right. Like some tipping point, you know? I mean, right. I mean it sounds like they kind of want to favor the solar development and make that possible to happen. Mm -hmm. But we don't, I don't know, which is really better in terms of climate change. 
I don't know if you're both in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the, why her. It was really helpful, Rich, that she shared what she's writing. Yeah, that the was overall good. context mm -hmm. of the poll is. I mean, the goal really is to make it easier to mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. produce solar energy in Northampton. Right. And there's so few places, the woodland, they want the woodlands right. to mm -hmm. be one those. the ones that give. Right. I get and it. It's it's to protect the, whole, the woodlands. Yeah. Right. Trees. I mean, the whole like, thing that was in the newspaper today, the article about the um, consolidated energy, CCE or whatever, <laughs> you know, relies on producing more local renewables. Well, where are we going to do that? If we can't use agricultural fields, we have to cut down trees. But when you look at the really big picture, is that really what makes sense? I don't know. We're doing a lot of shooting in the dark on this one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to move us along. Um, so you'll be inviting Carolyn to the next meeting, yep. hopefully. I, I do want to just put out there that I'm, I'm aware that they want us to help them fast track this, but I want to apply due diligence and I'm prepared to do that. Um, okay, planning schedule. That's you Just. Oh, I think we're in good shape. So on the back of your agenda is the plan that was adopted. Uh, and at the bottom of that is the schedule. Um, so setting our three or five year goals, we may or may not be behind on that uh, process, but we're in line for uh, the, uh, the one year planting priority plan. Yeah, and I also want to point out that at the very last um, letter I uh, on this page, Assessment and analysis, December, early January, that's exactly where we are. And Molly's numbers that she's provided yeah. mm -hmm. recently of the ward distribution, the tree mm -hmm. distribution of the last three years, that it provides tons of data to help um, us analyze how we've done up to this point. I found it very limited. Um, I was thinking um, something that would be good to add to section three here given that we were talking about the neighborhood tree planting, is that we have that, I think it's a December deadline, or is it November, for those um, proposals to be submitted? It was supposed to be November, and we bumped it a month because right. we wanted to get at least one more. Well, let's say it's November. Mm -hmm. I think that should be added onto the schedule, too, that November is the date when those proposals have to be in, mm -hmm. because then we'll know how many um, neighborhoods want to plant trees and we can incorporate that into our planting plan for the next year. Yep. Like we maybe we'll do more neighborhood plantings and less, you know, other categories. Yeah. Like for that next year. Mm -hmm. So that could probably be between H and I. Um, and that could be um, evaluate neighborhood tree planting project applications. Yeah. December. Yeah, if we get the applications in November, we can evaluate them in December. Mm -hmm. Okay. In December. December. Okay. Good. All right, so Todd, maybe you could revise that to, to make that I evaluate um, neighborhood tree planting applications December, and then this assessment analysis will be June. Does that make sense? This is a great idea to have it on the back. That's, yeah, that's great. Excellent. Anything else about the overarching before we go into a little more nitty gritty? No, I think yeah, the next, obviously the next step would be for, for us as a commission to set the three or five year goals, uh, then to unleash the planting priority subcommittee to come back based on those goals with their plan. Okay, um, kind of chicken and egg thing. Do you, how do you see, like, do you see the goals as in, like, we want to increase the canopy you've got X percent? Or, like, how are you, how do you see those larger long-term goals? How do we, how do we describe that? Well, I think they were, they were, yeah, fairly broad. 
Uh, so perhaps even total number of trees per year uh, to help inform the, the budget process and also the, the capital planning process. Um, any, I think, general things that we wanted to focus on, you know, either, you know, urban, rural, certain, um, you know, round schools or just as a commission. And that's really was up to the subcommittee to dial that into very specific, uh, not site, not necessarily site specific, but streets, neighborhoods, zones, et cetera. Okay. In that case, what Maryland's got in front of her, I think, <coughs> is at least our, is that three or five? Hmm? Is that five years? Five years, yeah. Five years. I feel like that is what we already have done, which is 300 trees per year, according to these various categories of priority, broken roughly down into... No, 250 per year. 250 yep. per year. Okay, but we generally do more. <laughs> um, right? So, is there more to a three to five, a five year plan than that? Yeah. For discussion. I know. I, I, a planner. I don't think I've seen that. So. We pay, this is what we pay for now. Oh, I created that in one. Yeah. It's one of the tabs on our group spreadsheet. Prairie streets, Arbor Day planning, neighborhood planning, ward based requests, seven for ward, ad hoc opportunities. Prairie streets, 120. Five, Arbor Day 15, Neighborhood Planning 20, Ward Based Requests 50, and Ad Hoc Opportunities 40. Yeah, I, I would, you know, so if I was going to say what what my what my priorities would be in the, in the three years, it would be to, to seek ward equality, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and to, uh, you know, focus on, uh, to focus on, uh, 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 urban centers and tree belts, and to I, I'm just kind of making these up, kind of, um, and um, uh, to really concentrate on our school zones and youth outreach or something like that. So it would be broad categories, not, and then it would be up to your subcommittee to really dive into, you know, the nitty gritty for the next year based on. Everyone agreeing on broad, you know, three, four bullet points of mm -hmm. priorities for the next three years. What are we really going to tackle in more detail in the next twelve months? I have a question on the wards. Um, do we want to look into whether it's A and B different wards? <coughs> like ward seven, um, seven B is leaves which is a whole separate area, then 7A. And some of the other words are like that too, where um, it's you know quite different. You know, if you're in this part of Ward 6, it's very different than if you're in that part of Ward 6. Or, um, is that something we want? That can be figured. I can go back and do that. It's kind of a lot of work, but you know, over time, mm -hmm. I, it could be done. Do we want to look into that level of I don't. I think that you know what I found so helpful is that we have now have data that says over a three-year period, this is what our our board distribution looks like, right. and that's what we really need to be is looking at these things in a longer-term view, as Ron has said many times. And now that we have three years of data, we know that we have really neglected board six. Was it board six? Like hugely. And so that will inform the three of us in our next few years of choosing some priority right. streets within those boards. I personally am not fussed about A and B. I, I, I feel like that in some ways creates busy work for you. Like within the yeah. work, we're going to identify the areas that make sense. Yeah. Because they have all these other benefits that we've identified. Right. Okay. By the way, these numbers are slightly off. I'm just curious. Why. I did go back and correct. Um, I sent out a second email that oh. said that um, yeah. mm -hmm. I noticed that there was a discrepancy and I went back. It's almost, there's still like two trees in the grand total oh, okay. that by, but that's pretty good. But I fixed the fence. <laughs> out of over a thousand trees. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll so I think that Todd, from what I heard from you say, I feel like we're on the right track because I think we're taking all those, those, you know, um, 
general benefits in mind when we choose our streets. No. And then it's a matter of getting that information to the site to you, Jen, and your people as quickly as possible to start working on it, going into the, the brain area. But, well, but I would argue, I don't think this commission is all on the same page when it comes to a five-year plan. And I think we should have that conversation mm -hmm. and agree to three or four bullet points that will guide us What our main priorities are? Like, you mean what our main priorities are? Yeah, I just said, I just spat off some things and I know that if we were debating that, I, was, I would get some pushback. Like what we did, I don't know how many years ago. Well, that was more for that like that what we were going to like tackle point, but right. I think we still, I think we need to have a conversation up front, like the next meeting, to establish our three-year thought process as to what are we really going to be emphasizing. Huh? All right. Well, well, I mean, I feel like that could be at least led the consideration. A proposal could be led by our subcommittee because that is kind of what we are asked to do. And you know, I, I, I feel like the three of us have had this conversation enough times and have heard. Um, from people about what they feel are the are priority areas, and I can let me just um, that we can at least say this is what we propose to focus on. I'm trying to find that list of where we. I have a question, Todd. Are are you okay with the five areas and the numbers roughly assigned to each, or is that's not my uh, uh, that's that's I think that's good for. I think you only need to do that for one year. One year. Like the coming year. Okay. But I think we as a commission need to pull back, hear from Rich and his work with the sustainability and climate and all the groups and get a, get an understanding of what the city's gonna be looking at the next year. Mm -hmm. That can help us say, all right, well we're gonna we're gonna let them do their work on uh, you know, drainage swales and these areas and not touch that. We're gonna focus on you know, dense neighborhoods, uh, you know, getting the, the wards a little bit more equal and really focusing on, on tree belts, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fine, then we're all, then you, then you guys know what to do when you go and set your more detailed priorities for the year. Okay. And we're not all right, so are you coming back and debating with each other after, you've, you know, six months from now, we're all set and good to go. Okay. Okay, do we get out a flip chart then and have like that big conversation in January where we once again uh, identify like the high benefit categories, stormwater mitigation, walkability, safe route to school, that kind of thing, and then we and then we rate those and then come up with like our top. Yeah, we can do it any number of ways. I just I just think it's a conversation that we probably need to have again, and I. I think it would be, I think it would behoove us to listen to the city and have a clear understanding of where the city's going in the next three to five years, so that we can make sure that we're in, either in sync with that or give Rich some feedback so that he knows how to go in and maybe direct them based on our priorities. But we're everything's going to be coming like this, and we either get synced or we're going to start. We're just going to be banging heads. Right different departments on that. It's not going to get us anywhere. Right. Okay. So the reason we think that we should do it again, even though we did it before, is because of this whole new city level sustainability planning? Well, well, I think if, if you want to consider what we did, whatever it was, two years ago as our three-year plan, then that's fine. I, I would, I, I guess I would argue, I think it's time to revisit it and um. just either confirm it or shift it and then let you guys do your work and bring it back to the commission. Okay. All right, um, the, the three of us should be uh, getting together again. Um, yeah. But before before we move on, um, let's go ahead and give at least a report of what we what we roughly decided on for the next year. Okay, so just so everybody knows this is the first tab on our, our master tree planting spreadsheet. And um, this is what our subcommittee came up with back in September um, 
just as a way of, of tracking. So the areas, again, are priority streets, arbor plantings, neighborhood plantings, ward-based requests, and ad hoc opportunities. And the numbers associated with each are 125 for the priority streets, 15 Arbor Day, 20 neighborhood planting, 50 ward based requests, and 40 ad hoc. Um, so for the coming year, uh, hopefully we'll get that grant, and that will be the priority street area. That, that will cover that, <coughs> or, or some of it anyway, not all of it. The parking lot? Yeah. Well, it's not just the parking lot. It also includes 25 other trees, or at least, no, more than that. More than that. 36. The majority, the majority of the trees are outside the parking lot. So, only yeah. seven parking lot trees. Yeah, so it's, 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 a, it's a heat island over, over there, and it's a walk, you know, heavily traveled area. EJ? Yeah. Uh, for Arbor Day plantings, we were Wait thinking, a minute. There oh, were okay. several other aspects to that. Oh, yeah, sorry. So 50 for the grant sites, um, about 25. Uh, uh, finishing South Street, um, 25 finishing Route 10 in trying to read, read the right here. So Route 10, you know, we consider uh, obviously yeah. we've almost completed Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some, I'm, I'm hoping that there might be some setback opportunities in the area of Bridge Street that's outside of our, wait, Bridge Street is Route 9. You can't do setbacks? No. Law well, doesn't apply there because we're not. It's not the city's public. It's not the right of way. It's okay, the state so state highway. I already I already asked. So anything that's outside of the city layout is not. You cannot do setback plantings because <coughs> we are not that law does not apply. Okay, but so. Tree Northampton could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tree Northampton could. We can do it. But, a, but, yeah. we, but we can't use any funds right. for it, and you don't have to have a. There's no setback agreement. They only have to yeah, trees. Still, though. still, there be trees. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll have a further conversation. But then also, so we're also talking about up Elm Street all the way to North Main. So whatever. Would you say that there are at least twenty-five sites on Elm Street? On the, I'm including all of them. Nine. 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 Yeah, Route Nine. Ten is Nine. over there. I'm, I'm going to South Street. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, I'm confused. <laughs> Would I think there's 25 sites? Sorry, my uh, Probably. I mean, there's going to be, to be truthful with you, some of those large, there's going to be some large trees that are going to have to come down on Elm Street that are not looking so healthy. One of them is that very large silver maple that's by Franklin Street that's huge. Mm -hmm. It's just rotting away. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, some black walnuts on the corner of oh. Oh. Crescent and Elm that are oh. struggling. So there's, there'll be, mm -hmm. there's Smooth probably size. plenty of, there's probably 25 locations, I would okay. think. I think All we right. could find 25 spots. Okay. I don't see why we could. Uh, the other street that we mentioned, which um, Todd, I remember once you brought in some photos for Hatfield Street as traffic on. Uh, because it was, no, we were, I forget what we were talking about. Though. I think that was a shop Yeah, I think it was. Thought that that might be another. Yeah, it was one of the street. It was, it was one street identified by the traffic yeah. common committee to put it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so those are the four things that we identified, perhaps for the priority streets. So same thing. There's. Um, 50 for the grant sites. Grant oh, site. We get the grant. South Street. Finish South Street. Uh, and Route 10. Route 9. Route 9, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm reading mean, your writing and I'm. <laughs> route 9. And then uh, Elm Street. Possibly on Hatfield. On uh, Hatfield Street, yeah. Well, you know, these are just, if, if, you, if other people have some suggestions for really high, you know, high public benefit priority streets. It's really informative to hear what Rich has to say about. The plans for trees coming down because that really changes the landscape a oh, lot. Okay. Here's a good example: the trees on, on uh, Woodlawn Avenue, all of them have to be examined. The ones that are on Child's Park side, a lot of them are going to have to be removed. Oh, why? Silver maples—they're oh. they're completely rotted inside. Is Park that your property? No, it's city property. It is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Woodlawn Avenue is 49 and a half feet wide, so we own quite a bit. 
just the part of it. Oh. You know, for example, we just took down three sugar maples in a row in the front of the house on Beacon, on Beacon Street. So we've, you know, we've created these poles. And the funny thing is, is a lot of these trees actually that we're taking down now are actually not trees that were identified by David that have to be removed. They were identified as tree cleans. So and that, you're finding that they're... Well, I'm just finding that with the 2016, 2015, we had the drought. 16, it was droughty. Mm -hmm. So 17 was fair. 18 has been plenty of water, but it doesn't really it's matter. Late. It's too mm -hmm. late. So so we're, we're creating holes in places where mm -hmm. we may want to think about actually going back and, and oh. you know, huh. I guess you would they would fall under ad hoc. Ad hoc. Well, but unless they're like unless enough of them are on a priority street. Remember, our priority streets are. Um, here's what we originally brainstormed for priority streets: Route 10, Route 9, Route 5, Cons, Old South, um, 66, Bridge Road, Damon Road, Hatfield. Those are the you know high, highest main uh, arteries through town that we thought had you know, serious traffic calming needs. And then there's a whole bunch of heavily walked other than that. I mean, we have a whole list of streets, but, um, you know, so we'll take, we'll, we'll take suggestions, especially when a, when a whole slew of trees have come down in a <coughs> busy street. Yeah, Woodlawn Avenue. Woodlawn Avenue is nice because there's no <coughs> utilities on it either. The utilities run behind the houses. Oh. So. so there's no wires. Oh, great. We could do some white oaks. You could, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's such a distinctive street. It does. Well, it is. And, it's, and it has it's really you know, overarching change. canopy. It's been there yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I think the silver maples, a lot of them have run their course. Yeah, yeah, it's not a great So thing. we had one fall on a car and demolish it. So, it, you know, it's. Yes. So they are do not you want us to put one on Avenue on our. our I think it would be. I mean, I think it does get traffic. It does get yeah, a lot of traffic. Lot. It, it's already been renovated. It's been repaved. The stormwater right. system is not going to change. Right. So, so why don't we add yeah. that? It might to be a good our, street to consider. It's on a park. It's near a school. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Near the Y. Near the center. Mm -hmm. so we um, well, I mean, the meeting is posted. Oh, it's only posted till six. How six ten. Okay. It's on six ten. Um, well, I have 6 p.m. It says 6 p.m. up here. I screwed up. That was my bad. Sorry. Oh. That's back when I it used to be 4 to 6. Oh. Um, how are people doing on time? I mean, we've been going for an hour and a half. I have plans tonight, so I can't stay too late, but I can stay 10 extra minutes if yeah. necessary. I just need to be on by 6 30. Okay. How are you doing, Tom? I, I go buy some stir fry ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we can buzz through the other stuff pretty quickly. Um, uh, I don't think that we're going to need to go to extend. I think we're going to vote last. All right. I, you know, we don't have to have all of this perfectly. Uh, can you just quickly tell us what in the other category? I think it's just. Yes. Yeah, so for Arbor Day planting near community modes, we. I need to just our proposals, but we're open to feedback. So is this, is, sorry to interrupt you. Has this been loaded up already, or has this not been loaded up? This. That's. Is it on the? This is on the. Is yeah. The first tab yeah. of our spreadsheet. Yeah, and I'm I'm calculating it now. Is that what your question is? Yeah, because I'm I'm. So this is for 2019 suggested. Yeah. Okay, so I'm only seeing there's 2018 suggested. Um, go to the five-year plan. Yeah. Go to the first tab, yeah. and you'll see that I've started. Oh, okay. Using okay. That. Yes. Yep. And so I'll put in um, also with uh, with mine. Okay. So anyway, sorry. Go on. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. On, uh, th thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Uh, so Arbor Day planting, plantings near community nodes. Cooley Dickinson. We had a question mark about uh, Fruit Street housing area mm -hmm. and the YMCA. There, there was some trees being moved there by the parking lot. We're talking about the housing authority, down. It's private property. Is there any way we can work with them? You'd have to do a setback agreement, probably, because they're not a city entity. Is that worth, is that worth pursuing? Yeah, it would be, I think. Are you talking about the lot? It's just, a, it's no, great planting. But by the Cahill, by the Cahill apartments, they took down a whole bunch of sugar maples that yeah. were shot. Mm -hmm. But also near the parking lot of the lawn. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's all separate. Right? Oh yeah, that's a separate one. Yeah, on, on, on Massasoit Street. Yeah, Massasoit. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would that would be good. That would, that's all underwire work, though. Those are all underwire I trees. You could, Can you pull it back? Can you? Because it kind of goes up. This looks yeah. like a berm there. Could you plant behind? That's the that's their property. Uh -huh. so, so potentially. We potentially, could we could do a setback room with the YMCA. Okay, so yeah. that's that's something that someone can pursue. Yeah. I have a connection with. Okay, the all right. CEO hey. over there. I'm going to move us along. Oh, yeah, that's all we had because we were going to do the vote for the neighborhood planting. Right. And then we were waiting on the numbers for the wards. And then ad hoc is as things arise. And just the thing about the wards, again, I think we've identified that we maybe want to start emphasizing ward six. Six. Yep. Is it six and seven? Or is it just six? Six, especially. Yep. So, um, Especially if there are requests that come in from Ward Six, you know our our recommendation would be that you prioritize those. We can start doing some value. Okay. And I might, you know, some of us might try to do some outreach, more outreach to people in Ward Six, so that they can they know that there's this opportunity to future these like maybe like Let's talk to Marianne. She's got her finger on the pulse. Right. She does. She knows everybody. Help out. Yeah. Mary Ellen and Lombardi? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so. She does. Thank you for that, Marilyn. Um, Sue, do you think you can keep your update to five uh, can do, <laughs> probably do it in a month, minute and a half. Whoa! Whoa. It's Yay. really been um, the volunteers, three days a week pruning, as promised. Um, that's mostly what's been going on. Um, been starting some emails about um, can we get a meeting together, working on an agenda for January to look at um, codifying our program of planting trees, exactly what you were talking about earlier, where city money can't be used yeah. um, so that we can articulate. We have potential donors who would like, to, we need to be able to say for this much money, we can do this much. Mm -hmm. We have done four where the people just pay for the trees. And um, mm -hmm. that's, for 2019, that's the part of our program we're looking at expanding more. So we want to, I know um, some things that have come up is talk to the Catholic Church, talk to um, downtown businesses, and be able to go to them and say, there is a city program that you sign for, or um, we have a donor who will sponsor a tree, be able to offer something. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going. Yeah. So that pretty much sums up. I haven't been out there pretty much, but there's a little break, and then it starts back up in January. January, January 8th. Or January 8th? Yeah, that's if okay. the weather holds. I got Felco's for my birthday. I'm very excited. Uh, you got what? So, Felco's. They're really high oh, quality. Nice. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Was that last week? Last week? Village Hill on Tuesday, okay. Wednesday. Yep, Wednesdays and Saturday mornings. Okay. Saturday morning. With the, with the Please join us. Did you say birthday? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you say birthday, Laura? We that's right. Yeah, that's you right. You had a ton. I got oh, really? for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Happy that's birthday. right. Yes. Okay. Um, the, the thing that I want to mention about the planning for the 2019 officer election is that I, I checked the minutes from last year and, asked, and we ran our elections in early April last year. So there's no great rush on having a new um, a new officers yet. So if people want time, I'm happy to, you know, fulfill my full time and I fulfill our full year of, um, as as chair and vice chair. Um, so that gives everybody a time. I did ask uh, administrative codes clearly states that it has to be a chair and a vice chair. Okay. Well, no no co-chairs probably would not be. I, I asked the mayor's office were there any co-chairs, and uh, the only one was the disability commission, but they don't meet very often. Yeah. Well. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, any other business not anticipated by the chair? We may have a guest show up here. He's a he's a, a graduate student from the Forest Report in UMass. Who is actually going to be doing a, uh, a, his thesis? And his thesis is based upon the amount of time that it takes to train a volunteer properly to prune trees. So I will send you the email chain that I have so you can kind of read it. He'll be, he'll, I thought he was going to come to this meeting, but he's just going to come as a um, uh, 
for a public comment just to kind of see the workings of the commission. But he will be actually working on his thesis with us for a whole year. So it'll be interesting. And it'll be published eventually. So he's going to actually work with us. He's going to work with myself. He's going to work with Tree Northampton. Um, he's actually going to, he's just basically getting his feet wet, but he's going to be giving classes um, to volunteers and then actually having some kind of matrix to measure how long it takes a volunteer to actually be able to prune a tree properly. Um, and actually, I, it's very interesting, this, this thesis. So I told him I'd be more than happy to help on it. I didn't think you would mind because it's not really going to take much of your time. So, okay. Let me know if you want me to put him on the agenda. Yes, I will reach out to him and see if he wants to come to a meeting so he can kind of talk to us all. Okay. Uh, all right. Get him on the agenda. All right. To news. Look how much time we made up so quickly. <laughs> We're on time now. <laughs> so, shall the subcommittee, should we meet again before the next meeting? You, you um, you know, it's Christmas. I know. Christmas oh, Christmas I think yeah, that right. one's going to be tough. We're going to have to do it right after. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got to at least yeah. plan the date. Okay, so that's it to do. Yep. It's a plan a date. Anything else from this little corner of the room? Our to do's? Yay. Okay. That will go on the table. Read the, um, the neighborhood tree uh, <coughs> proposals. Planting proposals and uh, be prepared to vote. I think that's my job. I might do a little And you're still reaching out to like, oh, Chicopee? Yes, I, I did reach out to him. It took him, he just emailed me back after like three weeks. So I, I have to get back to him. So I think I'm just going to ask him to come to a meeting, I guess, with my be the best. Because that way people could fully. Okay. Figure out whether sure. you want to use him or not. Okay. Yeah, it, she just got back to me actually. Uh, I'm going to follow up with Rob next week and take a hard look at Prospect Street so I can go back and get some information for all commissioners. Uh, I already invited Carolyn and Mish to hopefully come to our next commission meeting uh, to get her on the agenda. If not, she'll be on the following one. Um, I don't know. A lot of other things. I can't even name them all. Yeah. Those are the two big things I need to take away from this meeting. Plus, I forgot something, so I can remind you at any given time. Be ready for Carolyn, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I can run this place. That's okay. Um, look over the applications. Um, that's all I committed to doing, I think. Oh, yeah, we all need We're all yeah. doing that. All right. I have a funny story to tell you guys, but I want to do it off, cam off camera. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready to um, adjourn this meeting? Am I allowed to talk to it? It's not, it's not related to the commission. Yeah. All right. So we already got a, a yeah. motion. Yeah. 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 You guys are ready to go. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.